Okay everyone, this is Emre Kızılırmak with Twincom Technologies. Today we will talk about MIMO, MUMIMO and Massive MUMIMO technologies and their benefits. We hear these terms all the time in our field and we will try to cover their definitions and the practical advantages. I will not go into a deep technical description, but we will try to explain the concept. I will try to keep it short and simple, okay? However, some level of understanding of RF transmission will be helpful. We will start with a defin definition of single input, single output systems and discuss its problems and see how MIMO systems help us to overcome them. Then we will move forward with MUMIMO by covering two main technologies makes MUMIMO possible, beamforming and sounding. And we will finish with discussing massive MUMIMO and how it differs from MUMIMO. Okay, first of all, let's start with the most basic transmission, a single input, single output system. A CISO system simply consists of a single antenna on each end. The transmission between the antennas carries the coded signal to transmit the data. However, it's not that simple in real life. Since the antennas do not transmit only in a single direction like a laser beam, the same signal will be reflected from smooth surfaces and the reflections will arrive at the receiver with a delay. These signals arriving on different times add up and the total received signal may be deformed. This is the effect of multiply. One other aspect of re reflection is the change of polarization. When we send a signal out, it is supposed to travel and be received on the same plane, mostly either vertical or horizontal. When the signal is reflected, it may also change its polarization and you may only receive a weaker portion of the, of the signal. So let's have a look at the MIMO system and see how it helps with multipath and polarization problems. MIMO systems uses antenna arrays and they communicate over every antenna available on each end. The number of antennas does not have to be equal. In an M by P MIMO system, N designates the number of transmitting antennas and P designates the number of receiving antennas. Since each transmission can be received by each antenna on the receiving end, MIMO requires advanced signal processing techniques to be implemented. We know signals can be delayed due to multipath in real life and it causes problems in a CISO system. In a MIMO system, Especially diverse receive antennas receive the same transmission with delays. So the MIMO systems are already designed to handle delay signals. To have a simple example, let's have a look at a 2x2 MIMO system. The most common antenna type we see in a 2x2 MIMO system is a dual polarized antenna. In a dual polarized antenna system, Two antennas are orthogonal to each other, mostly in vertical and horizontal polarization. Keeping two signals orthogonal allows the same channel to be used for both RF chains without interfering each other. Placing the antennas orthogonally allows us to properly receive the transmissions with a polarization shift. When a transmission is received with a polarization shift, both antennas can receive the signal's corresponding parts. So let's have a look at the advantages of a MIMO system. We will definitely get more throughput with doubling or increasing the number of the RF chains. We will get a better bar result because we are using the advanced DSP techniques to process the signal. And we will obviously gonna get some better multipath results because of the diversity of the antenna. To move forward, let's have a look at the multi-user MIMO concept. The idea behind the new MIMO is simple. It is to communicate with multiple users simultaneously in order to deliver more throughput. To have an efficient multi-user system, there are two technologies in use, beamforming and sounding. When discussing multipaths, we have seen that the delayed signals were added up on the receiver. 
we can actually use this for B forming. If the signals are received in phase, they add up to form a stronger signal. And if they are received with a phase shift of half wavelength, they cancel each other. So if we use two antennas in the same polarization to send the same signal, we will have a pattern of added and cancelled signals. The overall pattern forms a narrower and stronger beam. However, if we cannot direct these beams to the clients, they will not give us much of an advantage. The good thing is, we can change the direction of the beams by adding a phase difference between the antennas to aim them to the clients. But how will the AP know where the client is? The client sends a feedback to the AP about how well it receives the signal. The AP forms the beam accordingly to aim at this client. The feedback is called channel state information and the overall process is called sounding. So now we have beam forming and sounding mechanisms in hand, but where is the MIMO part? If we add another set of antennas on the orthogonal plane, we will have the same beam forming and sounding mechanisms on this plane as well. And we will have a MIMO communication. So now we have beam forming and sounding and also MIMO, but we still haven't achieved multi-user capability. To have a simultaneous connection, we simply need to duplicate the same setup. Both beams will be able to do beamforming and sounding and also provide a MIMO connection. Having both beams on the same AP allow them to work on the same channel. Typically, in today's applications, more simplified methods are used in MIMO applications. There are 8 to 8 Wi Fi APs and 4 to 4 fixed wireless access APs available in the market. Generally speaking, most of the time, the beams are not completely independent in these products. They may move with a fixed angular difference or not move at all. This will cause good and bad spots on the coverage area. Comparing to 2 by 2 MIMO point to point, point to point, multi, uh, sorry, comparing to 2 by 2 MIMO point to multi point system. This is the general kind of uh, multi point systems that we use today. You will definitely have more capacity to be delivered from the AP. However, there's a chance of losing connectivity to some of the clients. The antenna patterns and the way of utilizing MIMO techniques must be considered when designing a network, especially for fixed wireless access. Looking at the advantages of a MIMO system, we of course will, will have the old advantages of a MIMO system. And on top of that, we will have more capacity on the AP on the same channel because of the simultaneous connections to the clients. Moving to the machine with my mom. But how many uh, beams can we have on a single channel that will work without affecting each other is, is the question that we need to answer. Typically, systems up to 8 to 8 are said to be MUMIMO, and anything above is considered to be machine with my mom. So the main difference is the number of antennas, that's the number of simultaneous beams. Even though there's no exact differentiator for these two terms, Massimo MIMO is a complex implementation of all these methods together to communicate to several users simultaneously. It is not easy to put all these technologies in use, so there's only a bunch of examples we can see today. Looking at the advantages of a Massimo MIMO system, on top of everything from MIMO and MU MIMO, we will have a massive increase on the capacity on the IP with the several simultaneous connections to the clients. I know it is a, it's been a short and fast presentation, but uh, I'll try to stick to the basics. So if you have any questions, I'll be happy to answer them now. We will have a recording of the session afterwards and it will be shared to you by email.
I see we don't have any more questions. So thank you very much, everyone. And please feel free to contact me on time for your questions. I'll be happy to help. And stay safe and have a good one.